Welcome to our today's presentation. Today we will explain you how ergonomic workstation design can increase the attractiveness of the working environment. Um, Tim Steinebach and myself will guide you through the presentation. We will explain you why ergonomic design is important, how ergonomic design can be done, uh, how we finally did it. We will show you the results and we will also speak about advantages for your business. Um, the project was a shared um, project between the Technical University of Darmstadt and SSI Schaefer, where we have tried to develop the best possible set of workstations. Why is ergonomic design important? Um, we all know it. Our society is getting older and older, meaning um, we need to design workstations which are focusing on pickers in the late 50s, no longer in the 20s or 30s. Also, um, if people get sick, they are not at work, it's quite expensive for the business. Another factor is that um, we have a very much limited availability of operators. So companies of today, they need to face the challenge of the war of tolerance. On the other hand, um, the consum consumer behavior has changed. So e-commerce is changing the way of uh, operation in the warehouse. We are no longer shipping uh, full pallets. No, we have to focus on piece picking. Also, there are more and more regulations which are impacting the warehouse operation. So it's getting more stringent how to operate the warehouse. On the other hand, um, a general statement is that ergonomic design helps to make the daily work better and to motivate the employees which finally is increasing the efficiency on the long term, which is, let's say, the most important thing when talking about operations. Some facts and figures. Um, Health-related absences. Um, employees in the logistics sector are, on average, about 20 days per year on sick leave. Uh, talking about people in the um, age of older than 45 years, it's even 28 days per year. We're talking one month. Um, this is resulting in quite uh, huge losses uh, caused by absences and those have drastically increased in the last years. Um, in Germany, the figures from 2006 to 2017, they have quite increased. So 2006 people were on average 11.6 uh, days uh, absent. Um, in 2017, already 17 um, days. The loss of cross value added is today approximately 140 billion euro. So it's quite massive. Uh, the logistics employee are above average on sick leave. 60% uh, of the sick days, they can really be tracked back to diseases of the musculoskeletal system. So physical stress causing issues to the body. Um, those direct losses are one thing, um, but on the other hand, we also have the indirect losses they are not really um, measurable, but if an operator is not showing up in the morning to work, uh, he cannot uh, execute his orders. This will result in a bad deliver delivery reliability, uh, breaking server level agreements, which is negatively impacting the customer satisfaction. And finally, customers might buy somewhere else. Um, the limited availability of workforce, on the one hand side, we have the metropolitan areas where you have already a DC of company A and B. So it's already hard to get the labor, but also we have a very low unemployment rate. In 2019, it was only 6.4% all over Europe. Um, some other examples, Czech Republic only 1.9%, Germany 3.2% uh, or Poland 3.4%. Those are all areas where in the last years a lot of DCs have been built. Um, the war of talents, I mean, um, the employees, they can be picky about their employer. So would you rather work in this kind of working environment where you have to pick in bad postures? Or do you prefer an environment where everything is really well designed to your body? After the facts and figures, um, we will now show you um, how the project has been done. Tim Steinebach will explain you more about how we have achieved the best possible economic design. Thank you, Mr. Schellinger, for your introduction into the topic. Now we're coming to the next agenda point, which is how can it be done? 
And since we are from the University of Darmstadt and for the Institute of Ergonomics and Human Factors, we considered an approach from the ergonomic point of view. And we have always taught in university that there are four main tasks of, ergonomic, of ergonomics, which are first to analyze, so you have to analyze a product or a system, then to measure, an example, the strain or the stress of a human being, then to evaluate, which means that you have to show what impact this stress or strain has on a human being, and the last point is to design, so you have to find a proper design solution for your process or for your workplace. And in the past, there has been developed a lot of um, analysis methods in ergonomics that try to quantify the stress of a human being. And we have here some methods shown in the list. And uh, you can categorize these in four categories, which are at first the core screenings, then the special screenings, the expert screenings, and the measurements. And what you can keep in mind here is that from the top of the table to the bottom of the table, the degree of detail is increasing, but also the knowledge that is necessary to use these analysis methods is also increasing. And furthermore, you also have um, here on the right side of the table the different kinds of physical workloads that um, are on the uh, order picker in this case. Um, and you can see which kinds of these uh, physical workloads are considered by these specific screenings. So for example, the NIOSH um, lifting equation, 1993, only considers manual material handling. While, by example, and that is why we choose this kind of uh, screening tool, the EAWS considers all the four kinds of physical workloads that can occur, for example, while order picking, which are manual material handling, working posters, action forces, and repetitive movements of the upper extremities. And we also supported this EAWS uh, screening with a motion capture system, which I will talk later on. Um, let's, let us talk a little bit more about the structure of the EAWS, which is, you can see it here on the upper side of, the, of this chart. Um, we have the three kinds of physical workloads, like working postures, action forces, and manual material handling. And this is summarized up together with extra points for additional workloads, to one score that is called workload for the whole body, while the re repetitive workloads are treated separately in this case, and therefore you have to decide if the score for the whole body or the repetitive workload is higher, and that is then the final score of the EAWS. And, but what does this number tell us? Um, what, how can we interpret the number? And uh, that is what you can see in the next table here, which shows us that if you're between 0 and 25 points, this corresponds to a low risk of development of physio or of, um, skeletal, musculoskeletal disorders, and therefore this workplace or this process can be recommended. If you're between 25 and 50 points, then there is a possible risk for developing musculoskeletal disorders, and then you have, if it is possible, to, re to redesign the process or the workplace. And furthermore, if you're above 50 points, then this says that there's a high risk for MSDs, musculoskeletal disorders, and this should be avoided, so it's not recommended. So when we are talking about EAWS, it's an expert screening, there are, it has a lot of advantages, but also disadvantages. Let's first talk about the pros. So at first you have a relatively quick insight into the physical stress and also how you can reduce these stresses. Furthermore, the procedures of the EAWS are based on knowledge, backed up in occupational science and also in international standards. And that is also why it is very widespread in the industry and is highly accepted. But on the other hand, it needs very high training efforts. So if you want to use the, um, these, these kind of screenings, you need a lot of uh, knowledge in ergonomics. But also, it is subjective, so you have a lot of subjectives um, in, the, in the screening methods, like for example, uh, when you're talking about um, postures or rather joint ankles, then you have to estimate them, and that is why we use a motion capture uh, system to really can, that we really can measure these joint ankles, for example. So let's talk about how we did it. First of all, we did a 
field study phase here in Giebelstadt at the Technology Center. And um, we had a look on the one-level picking and also on the two-level picking stations here in the Technology Center. And what we did, we used two um, very experienced order pickers and equipped them with a motion capture system, which is called Captive System by the company TEA. And this consists of 15 sensors that you can place on the upper and lower limbs of the order picker. And then they track on the location and also the orientation, so they communicate with each other and can thereby tell you what are the joint angles, which you can see here on the both pictures and the, on the right side of the both windows. Furthermore, from there, you can derive um, a digital model, which you can see in the avatar here on the left side of the table. So with the knowledge that we gained in these um, in these, uh, mock -up, in, in these studies, we did a mock-up study at our institute in Darmstadt and we built up 12 versions of different kinds of um, order picking stations. And these versions differentiate between each other because we altered, for example, the orientation of the order and storage to totes, for example, if they were orientated crosswise or lengthwise. Also, we um, altered the tilt of the totes and we um, changed the setting. So at uh, one point we had a one level setting and the other we had a two level um, order picking station. And then we did picking trials with um, test subjects, uh, in total eight test subjects and also with two different SKU weights. So we had low weights and um, higher weights. And this was uh, a result in a total of 192 trials. And each of these trials were captured with our motion capture system. So we have the um, the joint angles, the posters, movements, and also the walking distances of all these trials. And the aim was to integrate these data, this motion capture data, into our EAWS tool so that we can um, support our EAWS with objective measures. So let's talk about the results. Um, what did we see? At first, all of the bins or totes are easily accessible and visible, which we saw in a CID model, and uh, you can see it here on the right side of this slide, where we used a fifth percentile of a Japanese woman. So also very small persons can easily access the toads. The second thing is that comfortable working postures are possible. So for example, very limited bending and rotating of the trunk is necessary, um, which we also can, could see in our motion capture analysis. Furthermore, what's also a very important point is that the both stations, one level and two level picking, support walking. So we have to walk to reach into a toad. And this is preferable to static postures because standing a whole day on a working station without moving is not very good also in, uh, in the sense of the EAWS. But on the other hand, the walking does not lead to high energetic stresses. Also, if you handle loads that are below two kilograms, this leads to low stresses, according to the EAWS. So we are here in a below 25 points, which corresponds to the green range. But if you change the picking frequencies to very high picking frequencies, for example, over 700 picks per hour, or to very heavy weights, for example, over two kilograms, then regardless of the picking station, the EAWS becomes to more than 25 points, which corresponds to the yellow range. So from there on, you can have a rule of thumb, so to say, um, which tells you that very high picking frequencies, so over 700 picks per hour, or combined these uh, high picking frequencies with very high SKU weights, this should be avoided and is therefore not recommended for these stations. But it is not um, dependent on the workstation designs because this applied for all the 12 versions that we tested. Um, you can see these results also in these two diagrams here on that slide where you can see that if you go for one level picking at the left side and also two level picking on the right side, if you go over 700 picks per hour, the EAWS values that are on the y-axis are increasing very fast. So this is coming from the repetitive movements of the upper extremities that, uh, that are having high scores if you, go below, uh, if you go above the 700 picks per hour. But on the other side, if you, um, if you stay below this, uh, this uh, critical value, then all these stations are in the green range, so it is recommended to work 
in this environment or in this, at this station if you uh, stay below that value. Okay, if you furthermore want to see how the station finally does look like, please um, join Mr. Schellinger again for his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Steinebach, for introducing uh, our project, our studies. Um, now I'd like to show you how the results look like. Um, they are all uh, called get and pick stations. And here's the video. The get and pick stations are all um, certified with our ergonomics at work. Um, the pick station design, as we have introduced, they are following the highly ergonomic standards. They can be equipped optionally with a height adjustable platform, also to, um, let's say, be able to um, adapt the height to the uh, body height of the picker. It's easy to access the source totes, uh, the uh, order totes. Um, we are using very easy um, light guidance systems from subway systems. And the one level station can be equipped optionally with a special conveyor of our uh, partner, a startup, a Salomation. And um, they are optimized for one and two um, hand picking for light and heavy products, so e commerce, spare parts, everything. The station itself can be connected to all of our storage systems. We can connect them either with AGVs, with conveyors, so everything is basically possible. The uh, Get and Pack Station 2 level has the source toad above the order toad. It can also be equipped with a height adjustable platform. Uh, we are using um, Pick by Light Guiding System, and this station is um, specifically designed for one hand picking of light items and um, it's, the ergonomics is optimized for droppable items so that the, the item can be dropped in the order toad other than put it in. The design is proven by an, an um, independent institute, the Institute of Ergonomics of, of Darmstadt. And also they helped us to create a kind of summary of this uh, kind of study. And the study actually certifies that the station, they comply very well with the ergonomic standards for working postures, uh, manual handling of loads, and also the uh, repetitive movements of the upper limbs. So we are actually fulfilling the well-known ISO and EN standards. And we will also shortly have a very um, detailed report of what studies we did, we can in the future share with our customers. Let's talk about the advantages for your business. Um, because on the one hand side, ergonomics has a price. Because ergonomic design, uh, you need to invest the money uh, in designing the right station type. But um, following the rule of 10, ergonomic design saves money on the long term. Because if you have the right design from day one, you don't have a lot of cost for changes at the latest, at a late moment. And you are not losing efficiency because your operators are getting sick, for example. We already invested the money for you because the stations are already designed in the best possible way. Some other advantages for your business. Um, we talked about that um, it's very hard to get labor. So you have to design the best place to work um, for your uh, employees. You have to be the most attractive uh, employer in your, let's say, area. Um, and this is what we have achieved with our project. On the other hand, um, also, it's about reputation. Um, we all have read in the news about some um, disease where operators, they have to walk 20 kilometers per shift and they have to pick in quite bad postures. So I think it's a better thing if you can report that you have designed the best possible station. And so you're also following your social responsibility. Um, we talked about the health-related absences and that 60% are caused by issues of the musculoskeletal systems. So when you have the right station, you can reduce this. And thereof also you can reduce your direct and indirect losses. The right station design, it helps the operator to be more productive. Also, it is reducing the fatigue and is increasing your, the motivation. Um, also, it's proven that ergonomic design leads to less errors because if your operator are not tired, if they are very productive, they can just concentrate on the task. Um, less errors means a higher quality and a higher productivity means a higher service level. Finally, if you can fulfill your service level agreements, your um, end customers will be satisfied 
uh, your employee will be happier and this can boost your business. Thank you for listening.